competing with your own super fund to buy a house. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're living, as one viewer said on Twitter, in a boomer's paradise here in Australia. If you're hoping for a housing correction, if you're hoping housing will be affordable, well, well, you're going to be hoping even longer, guys, because, well, this this is just, just frustrating. This is just utterly frustrating. Let, let's look at this short article from the Fin Review, but some of the takeaways here are just getting me really angry. And, and, and oh, so budget to kickstart super for housing. The federal budget will take the first step towards encouraging the $3.3 trillion superannuation sector and other institutional investors to direct more money into residential housing. Okay? So, if you're my generation, all of your working life, you have been forced to pay into super. You know, it's good. It's, you know, as Paul Keating says, for future generations to reap the benefits. So you've had all this money sitting there just slowly building up and it'll be fantastic for your retirement. But that's money you could have used to buy a house as a house deposit. Maybe you could have got into housing a lot earlier and then reaped some capital gains on a house. Maybe have less interest and less pain to struggle through now as interest rates are going up. So think about that. You've got a whole chunk of money sitting there. You've been forced to save because of this paternalistic thinking from labor. And now, now, when housing is starting to track down and it's, you know, we, we, it's, okay, it's gone up a lot. It's gone up an insane amount. We've all seen it. And it's starting to decrease a little bit. Some people are hoping it'll be a correction. I honestly think the government will do whatever they can to juice the market. And this is just another example. But now... A generation of people who had to, uh, uh, you know, are forced to save for their retirement, some may never see it, now have to struggle to get into property because housing is getting more expensive. We've got more onerous construction requirements. We've got more onerous, uh, well, more onerous environmental requirements on the housing. The legislation changes, makes houses bigger, more expensive. And now you've got to compete with the super funds and other institutional investors in the same residential market where housing was used, used in the past to bridge the class gaps and the divides between people, allowed average people to migrate to Australia and raise a family, get a house and build a good life. That's not going to happen anymore. Those times are gone. Okay, that was previous generations. Those opportunities have disappeared. Now there's going to be even more of a class divide. And the worst thing is your own money in the super funds is going to be used to keep you out of housing. So <laughs> you've got you've got established homeowners who are negative gearing. You've got employees who are negative gearing. That's pumping up housing. Negative gearing is a poor uh, is a cultural phenomenon here in Australia, and I don't blame people. It's one of the the only mechanisms the average employee can use to mitigate their tax. Now we've got to push for institutional investors and super funds. It's just getting harder and harder. We're going to be a nation of renters. It's it's a boomer's paradise, guys. You know, they, they, their generation, they're reaping all these rewards. They didn't have all of these onerous requirements where they were forced to take a portion of their pay and stick it away until the end of their, their life. Some of them missed out, but a lot of them didn't. The construction requirements weren't as onerous. And now... Well, just as property is starting to trickle down, you've got all this big piggy bank here of money into housing. This is what people voted for, guys. This is what they voted for. What do you think this is going to do to housing? What do you reckon? Do you think it'll crash the property market? Not a chance. Not a chance. And now we've got shared equity coming in the in all of the states. Let, let's bring up let's bring up the old government intervention. I'm going to have to update this. This is how they juiced the market during the pandemic. You're going to interest rates insanely low. Home builder, 88 grand in discounts. You've got 5 and 2% government loans. You've had small super withdrawals. The super funds didn't like that. They didn't like you having control of your own money. Because, you know, we're all dumb plebs. We're all dumb plebs. So this is just another thing that's going to continue to juice the market, everyone. That's, that's what it is. 
I mean, do we want, do we want, uh, why is the government even encouraging the super funds at all? Shouldn't they be, well, you know why, because a lot of them are stacked with union members. It's all a big load of bullshit. They should be working to improve the returns for their, their members, but they don't have to compete. We're all forced to put money into it. And sure, you can set up your own funds and do all this own stuff, but most of the people don't have the time or energy to do that. So there you go. You're going to be competing. You're going to be stuck renting, paying a shitload of rent and competing with your own money against buy, saving up for a deposit. So it's not just the investors. It's not just the investors that you got to fight with. It's now the institutions for your own, with your own, using your money. Welcome to Australia, guys. It really is a boomer's paradise. The message to be unveiled in the budget on Tuesday, so that's tonight, Builds on the plan first outlined by Treasurer Jim Chalmers at an investment roundtable discussion with former Prime Minister Paul Keating hosted by the Australian Financial Review in August. Government and industry sources said an initial down payment on the policy would be included in the budget to get the idea off the ground as part of the government's push to expand affordable and social housing. Maybe stop hoovering up money from every bloody person so they can spend their own money. But they don't want that, do they? They don't want that. A lot of this left-leaning ideology is very paternalistic. It's about protecting people, and I can understand it. You know, the intentions are good. But if you cotton wool someone too much, they're going to be very weak. It's understood that some regulatory barriers for super funds and other institutional investors to invest in housing will be addressed. And the government will uh, dedicate resources for more work by Treasury and financial regulators to pursue the agenda. Super funds and other institutional investors are already investing billions of dollars in commercial real estate, but have relatively little exposure to the residential housing sector. The government announced at the Jobs and Skills Summit in September that it would uh, make up to $575 million from the National Housing Infrastructure Facility available for an investment in affordable housing as part of a plan to lure the super sector into social housing investment. The NHIF is a $1 billion facility managed by the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation that offers loans, grants, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've looked all about this. Super funds have pushed for greater tax concessions as a means to facilitate the expansion of commercial built-to-rent housing, currently a premium product, into a more mass market offering. We're, we're heading down the path of Europe. We're heading down the path of Europe, guys. The class divide is going to just grow. The super sector has also said it would need federal government top-up to invest in affordable housing since it uh, offered a lower rent to a yield. That's, well, then don't get involved in it. Let all the mum and dad investors who want to take that low return the build-to-rent property development sector has lobbied for government uh, for tax breaks for international investors on withholding taxes, but it's understood the Labor government has not adopted the proposal. Cooperation with state and governments would also be required. State and local government taxes and planning rules are a big hurdle, the yes, yes, yes. Land tax is imposed progressively on the... Yep, we've seen that. Um, planning and zoning is also a red tape deterrent. Well... Labor's drive to encourage big super funds into residential housing sets up an ideological clash with the coalition. At the May election, the Liberals proposed allowing first home buyers to withdraw up to $50,000 from their superannuation fund for a deposit on a home. Yes. Okay. I mean, this is, well, my ideological difference is quite evident. I would much more prefer the Liberal proposal because it's your money, it will be your house, it will be your asset that you will own, not something you will rent. Not not a, a Klaus Schwab, WEEF globally, you know, even if it's not uh, controlled by the state, it's controlled by organizations that are full of people that are so close to the state, it's ludicrous. It's more fascistic than anything. The money plus any uh, proportional capital gains would need to be repaid in the super fund when the property was sold. Yes, nothing wrong with that. That seemed like a brilliant idea. Labor and the powerful superannuation industry opposed the plan, 
arguing it would leave people with less super in retirement and push up the price of housing. You think this isn't going to push up the price of housing? This, this means you want it, people, the average person won't even get a chance to get in housing. What would you rather have? Less super and a house or more super and be a renter? And Labor promised to help 10,000 low and middle income earners. Yeah, what do you do? Shared equity. Shared equity, guys. So, yeah, let's, let's have a talk about it. This is what Australians voted for, everyone. This is what they voted for. It's kind of sad, isn't it? You'll be competing against your own money to get a house. Oh, well, you know. We screwed. <laughs> Oh boy, maybe I'm just too old. You know, these ideas of actually having individual responsibility and ownership, it's not collectivist enough, you know? I'm just the old fuddy duddy now. Bloody hell. You tell me your thoughts on this one, guys. Am I just becoming an old boomer now? Hey, and we can't have housing correct in price. Just push the super, fun super funds and institutional investors there. And, you know, they're even. It, they're increasing the mandatory amount that's paid in the super. It's going up. Sure, for a low-income employee that's right at the bottom scraping the barrel, it's going to be an increase. But for how, how many other people are their package just going to remain the same and a greater proportion of that money will be forced into here? You are literally competing with your own money controlled by others to get into an asset that you want to own to have stability, security, and to build a family. I don't know what to say. This this is what people voted for. This is Australia. What do you reckon? As always, thanks for watching. Check out my other channels, Heiser Bim and Heiser Says International for other content that I discuss. And if you're a fan and want to support us, you can financially on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links on Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Buy a pocket squares or call us if you need an architect. Take care, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.